You're listening to the Art Marketing Podcast, and today's episode is a tripod of sorts, really. Uh, yep, got three legs. If you don't like photography, fine by me. You could consider it also a stool at your favorite bar. Beer is extremely cold, and the game is on and about to start. Uh, so what are the three legs then? You get it, right? Um, today's episode, I would argue, is right on time. It's late, and it's early. Profound, right? It can't be all three. To which I want to respond, yes, yes, you can, but I want to explain that. If you've um, if you've been listening to this podcast for any, any period of time, or especially if you listen to the first episode, we, we sort of just launched this thing, you know, not knowing what its voice was going to be, not knowing exactly what direction it was going to be, just knowing that we wanted to make it about hardcore art marketing tactics, not esoteric, fluffy business, but, you know, uh, hardcore tactics learned by practitioners who are in the trenches doing this stuff every day um, that artists can put to use right away to start selling more art online. That much we knew for sure. What I think we didn't know as a result of, you know, coming up with the content for a lot of these episodes and for titling them and for, for going through all those motions is that we would end up, as, as I suppose a little happy accident, it's a windfall of sorts, we would end up sort of articulating what it is that we believe as a business at art storefronts, like, you know, why we exist what we see as the opportunity, what we see as is, is, is the opportunity for, for artists out there for the coming coming years, right? And so which episodes am I talking about? What do I mean? I mean, you know, the greatest time ever to be an artist. We believe as a business that 2017 and the years to come are absolutely the greatest time ever to be an artist selling art online or any, you know, small business entrepreneur I mean, anybody just about, right? Because as a result of all of the disruption, like we covered in that episode, I believe it's episode number 15, all of the disruption that call it the internet, social media, or the computer we all have on our pockets at all time has brought, it presents an opportunity to reach more people and more countries than ever before, right? That's a, that's a foundational episode to what we believe as a company. We believe it is the single solitary greatest time ever to be an artist. Okay. I get it, Patrick. I believe that. What's next? What's next is episode number 13 and 14, the collectively the Does My Art Suck Test. Now, that provocative title aside, this was also a foundational episode for us. Why? If you're an artist that wants to run their own art gallery online and believes that it's the greatest time ever to be an artist, the next important step that you need to do is you need to validate that the particular art, the particular niche, the particular style, medium that you've chosen is something that the market wants, is something that you're going to be able to sell. So you work on attempting to sell it offline, right? In those episodes are a bunch of the steps, strategies, and tactics you can use to figure out if what you got is, is you know, something that the market wants, if you're ready to start selling it online and make that investment and get going on, on, on that phase. Okay, great. So let's say you've been through those two phases and you're ready to go. It's like, what do you do at that point, right? What, what comes next? And so that's what brings us to today's episode. And today's episode is entitled, you know, Art Marketing Playbook or The Art Marketing Playbook. I got to see what we're going to title it. But this is another foundational piece of what we believe is part of our thesis. And so if you're going to start selling your art online, if you know that, 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 that the market want your art and you're going to be able to sell it, you're then into the active marketing phase, right? And, and in this active marketing phase, you're going to work uh, a daily, uh, a weekly, monthly, yearly at incrementally building your followers, building your email list, building your website traffic and building that business, right? Building that business. And it's the long game. It takes patience, perseverance, endurance. Um, but bit by bit, day by day, you get better. Like that's, that's a huge part of our thesis. All of that marketing you're going to do, in our opinion, is going to fall into one of two buckets. We believe bucket number one is holidays are going to come along. Uh, call that uh, Black Friday or Cyber Monday or Christmas or Valentine's Day or Mother's Day or made up holidays and more on that in a moment. Uh, you're going you're gonna to have those holidays where you discount your art and you go for a sale. The rest of the year, bucket number two is going to be the romance marketing you do throughout the year the non-salesy uh, uh, stuff that you put out there to provide value that, you know, uh, uh, creates inspiration uh, uh, that's for the entertainment purposes, for enjoyment, for beauty. All of these things that are designed, what we call romance marketing collectively, that are designed to increase people on your email list, to increase your followers, but more importantly than that, to 
Develop and build an audience that knows, likes, and trusts you, right? That's inspired by you, that loves your art, uh, 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 that, that wants to get to know you more, that, that really appreciates what you do, that loves what you're putting out in the world. All of those fantastic things, right? And the big picture idea is, is if you do that throughout the year, you've built up uh, uh, in, in the bank, so to speak, the know, like, and trust, the admiration, the respect, the love, if you will, of, of your audience. And so that gives you the audacity, that gives you the opportunity to go back to bucket one and have a big sale and ask for the sale, right? So that's that's the big picture thesis of, of, of what we do at our storefronts and what we believe and what we instruct everyone that comes on our platform to be doing. You have romance market throughout the year, you pick the holidays that work for you, you do the sales, but that's it. That thesis doesn't really change all that much. You're gonna just be doing that day in and day out throughout the entire year. And the tactics here and there are gonna change, but more or less, that's the big picture thesis. Now, when I was getting ready to record this episode, uh, I read a couple of things that were just too good and I thought dovetailed too well. So I want to I want to present them. And I found this out by, you know, I took, I borrowed this technique uh, from Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk. And his jam was that he goes and, and, and pulls up his phone, I've got an iPhone, and, and goes into the App Store and looks at the top 100 downloaded apps, or I think it's 200 on the list, top 200 downloaded apps every single solitary day. And I've made this my daily practice too because I think it's so smart. And I go in there and I look every single solitary day. And a couple of days ago, and, and the why is you wanna see where attention is about to move to, right? Like we're constantly as marketers, searching for attention. Where is the attention? What are the new apps? Can I get there before everyone else? Can I learn how to story tell on that platform? And then can I come teach you guys how to do it right on the, on the, on the podcast or blog about it, right? But saw an app pop on there called Alibaba Express and I knew what it was, but I didn't understand how it was not on the list at all. And all of a sudden moved up to number two, it was just like out of nowhere. I was like, okay, obviously this is, this is gonna take some delving into. So delving into it, I did it. For some quick context for those that don't know what Alibaba is, Alibaba started as a business a while back to basically a business to business, a B2B business that served as the intermediary between all the factories, primarily in China, but also surrounding Asia, and you know all the wholesale, wholesale buyers. Let's just say you had a swimming pool business and you wanted to get 1,000 or 5,000 giant white inflatable swans to sell as swimming pool ornaments you would need to find a factory in China to manufacture those for you. So you would go to Alibaba and there would be all these manufacturers and say, look at my awesome white swan, put in a thousand, thousand piece order and we'll send them to you for this dollar amount, right? So that's where it started. Since then, and also building on that greatest time ever to be an artist, since then, disruption, uh, Alibaba has realized, wait a minute, we don't need to just sell wholesale and you know, thousand pieces minimum order, 500 pieces minimum order, whatever, 10,000. We can also sell to direct a consumer, right? And so they came up with Alibaba Express, which is now a B2C business, a business to consumer business. And it's basically their version of the Amazon, right? With, you know, looks a little bit different, not quite as sophisticated. Highly recommend you check this out, by the way, go into the App Store, the Google Play Store, download Alibaba Express and look at it. You know, it wants to be Amazon, it wants to take over Amazon in certain cases it already has, but more on that in a second. So downloaded it, checked it out, and started going down the rabbit hole on it. And I read this article on TechCrunch, which I'll put in the show notes, which is um, artmarketingpodcast.com. And this is gonna be episode 17, I believe. And it says, Alibaba smashes its single day record. So we have Black Friday, we have Cyber Monday, we have Christmas. Uh, in Asia, they have what is called Singles Day. What does that mean? It happens on 11-11. Uh, since then, by the way, they've stretched this thing out to cover multiple days as marketers tend to do. But this is literally a nine-year-old made-up holiday um, invented by a guy, excuse me, named Daniel Zhang, who's now the CEO of Alibaba, but at the time, I guess he invented it. He was working for a, a, another online retailer, mall or whatever. But anyway, this this one just went down. It's 11 3, 13 when I'm recording this. This, this thing went down on 11-11. And the stats are that it did $25.3 billion in one day. Let me repeat that, 25.3 billion in one day. Now, obviously that number is crazy, Mickey Mouse big, so we need some context to understand it, right? What did we do here in the US um, on Black Friday, on Cyber Monday last year? We did basically combined $6.5 billion. So made up holiday in China, 25.3 billion. Huge holidays established in America, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, 7 billion, 6.5 billion. 
I mean, for how long have we been hearing that China is going to take over the entire world? You know, from militarily, economically, they're going to be the dominant world power. That's always sounded like hyperbole. And it's always felt like hyperbole. But now when I read this stat, it's like, whoa, that's a crazy amount of sales volume. My goodness. Why am I telling you this whole story? The salient detail in all of this, though, is, you know, they're an online merchant at the end of the day, right? Just like every artist is trying to sell their art online. You're an online merchant. Yes, albeit a little bit smaller. But what did Alibaba do in this situation? They invented a holiday. They did crazy discounting on the holiday. They had some scarcity, i.e. the discount's going to end. And they had a massive windfall of cash, right? The big point in that is we can copy that as individual artists and as online merchants. We can absolutely copy it. What about the Amazon version? Let's just talk about this really quickly because I think it gives some even more context. Amazon is an online retailer. Amazon's like 500 businesses, right? But Amazon at the end of the day is an online retailer. So what normally happens, where did the name Black Friday come from? The name Black Friday came from, historically speaking, all retailers would normally be, up until this point in the year when Black Friday comes, they would not be a profitable business, right? They would be operating um, at a deficit. And then Black Friday would come, and because of the sales volume, they would move from the red into the black, and they would be profitable for the rest of the year. Essentially, they make all of their money and all of their profit in the fourth quarter, right? And so what was interesting is that Amazon published its third quarter data, and they're a retailer that's not supposed to traditionally crush the third quarter, and they absolutely crushed it. They beat their expectations. They blew them out of the water. Why is that? And if you delve into the, the report and you look at it, a huge, huge contributor among other 5 million businesses that it has was Prime Day. So what Bezos did is he looked to China and he's like, wait a minute, nine years ago, they invented a holiday. Look at the sales volume. I'll take one of those too. He came up with Prime Day, another made up holiday out of, out of the blue. And what did they do on Prime Day? Same thing. <laughs> Discounted heavy, gave it scarcity, and it worked. It worked for Amazon. So the point is, is that, you know, I'm sure they're probably the two biggest retailers in the world, Amazon and Alibaba Express, if not in the top five. And the techniques and the tactics they used, we can all use as individual online merchants and, and put to our advantage. So today's episode the Art Marketing Playbook, we're calling it a playbook, is a playbook that we advocate that you run and that you use to handle your holiday discounts. So I'm really excited about this episode. We're really proud of, the, uh, of where we've got this Art Marketing Playbook to and I fired up just to present it in general. Now, quick housekeeping before we get into it. This was originally, I mean, the whole presentation is just by its nature you know, it's a bit visual. Is it is it going to go over well as a podcast? I absolutely think it will. I hope it will. Um, is it potentially better as a video? There's an argument there because there is visual and there's some there's some visual assets and resources that go along with it. So I'm going to link artmarketingpodcast.com. This is episode number, I think, again, 17. So if you want to watch the video, you prefer to do that visually to be able to download some of those resources and do all that. Just Come to the show notes. The video will be there. In fact, I'll just, you know what? I'll link right to the, the presentation on Facebook Live so you can just watch it that way. So I'll, I'll link to that if you want to go and check it out that way. But let's just uh, get into it and see how it goes and, and, and you can let me know from there. Now, we started this thing at the top, right, um, with th this notion of the tripod or <laughs> the stool um, and this, this, this notion that this, this episode is going to be right on time early and then also late or whatever that combination is. And why do I say that? I say that because as I record this episode right now, 1113, and I've, I've got this handy, I'm going to put this in the show notes too, but I've got this handy dandy page made with um, countdown timers to when all the holidays are. And I think it serves as good motivation to get your butt in gear and get, get, get all your I's and T's dotted and crossed and get ready for these holidays. But just for context, there's 10 days till Thanksgiving. Right now, there's 11 days till Black Friday. There's 14 days till Cyber Monday. And there's 42 days till Christmas. As At the time I record this, when, when you listen to it, it might be different. The, the important point of that, though, why this podcast is, is both right on time, late and early, is this playbook represents some fundamental steps we believe that you should take when you discount for the holidays. And the great thing about the holidays is there's always another one coming up, right? They're, they're constantly coming up. So I want to dive right into this thing. And to do so, I've, I've been giving you an analogy, right? 
And I believe that holiday marketing can be thought of as a soccer field. Soccer was always my sport. It's my jam. I love it. And just like a soccer game, there's a finite amount of time, right? There's a clock up there, 45 minute halves. Once it's done, it's done. The game is over. Um, in the soccer game, the, the goal is to score goals, right? And so the goal for you guys is to make sales. Um, picture a player on the field, right? That player on the field is your holiday art marketing uh, strategy, tactics, everything matched into one. That's your player. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to get him to score goals to make sales. So what do most artists out there do? They think that their holiday campaign is Lionel Messi. For context, he's the GOAT. He's the greatest soccer player of all time. Um, there's some, it's disputable, but I think I believe that he is. And so what most people do is they just think that their art marketing campaign, their one email, their one Facebook update is Lionel Messi, and he's going to score all the goals for him. And the reason that that is a flawed, uh, 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 a flawed idea is that it doesn't take into account the opposing team, right? So stay on the soccer analogy. There's an opposing team on the field. What is that opposing team? It's the holidays and all the craziness that brings. Going shopping, uh, uh, ugly sweater parties, Christmas parties, uh, your spouse's Christmas parties, uh, the holiday plays, it's schools, it's internet, it's YouTube, it's cat videos. It's everything. It is all the noise and distraction, which is amplified and magnified times 10 during the holidays, right? And so if you put Lionel Messi on the field and think you're going to score a bunch of goals, make a bunch of sales with just one activity, one email, one Facebook update, uh, you're in trouble. You do that, you're going to lose. So what do you need to do is you need to put some other players on the field to help Lionel Messi. What those other players on the field are going to do is they're going to work together as a team and they're going to help you score more goals, make more sales. What do I mean? What players am I talking about, right? I'm talking about coordinating your holiday marketing campaign. This is the playbook. Email, Facebook, both, both organic and, and, Insta and Facebook ads. Instagram, both organic and Instagram ads. Uh, Instagram stories, uh, YouTube, phone calls, postcards, whatever you have at your disposal is your team. And how they work in conjunction is how you actually win, is how you get noticed, right? It's just understanding how to put all those pieces on the board, understanding that they all need to be working together. You know, they're all in the boat, rowing in the same direction. If you do that, it can be insanely, insanely effective. So I think what we establish is the basics that you need to be able to run this, is you need a proper website, equipped to sell art, take transactions, take credit card. You need an email service provider, ESP, MailChimp, AWeber, Constant Contact, Drip, whoever you use. You need an email list. Don't worry about the size. As long as you have, as long as you have one, even if there's one, you can run this. Uh, you need a Facebook page and an Instagram account. You need a Facebook ads account. And then you need your email list uploaded to Facebook. That's what we consider the basics to run this. So I think regardless of where you are, well, I love this play look, regardless of where you are, how sophisticated you are in terms of your marketing acumen, how much of that stuff on the list that you got set up, you can still use this playbook, right? What I love about it is that you know, all of it takes practice. So you just, you break off what piece you can, you run what part of it you can, and you do it once, you get better, you do it again. These holidays are going to continue coming up. There's more and more and more of them. So that's what's awesome about it. So what I want to do is I want to go through the steps and the why. This can feel really complicated, but if we break this down into the steps, I think we can make it sound easy, which it is. And so let's talk about what the big picture game plan is. So we know we have a holiday coming up. Right now, as we sit at this time, at this moment in time, we've got the fourth quarter, which is the single solitary greatest time to be selling art. More often than not, we see more art sold in the fourth quarter than sold in the other three quarters combined. And if not, it is certainly the best quarter to be selling art regardless of, of, of who we are based on customer data. So the big picture game plan is the holidays are coming. You're going to pick one. You're going to create a discount. You're going to give that discount scarcity, meaning the discount is going to expire. You know, it's going to be one week or 24 hours or 48 hours. And we'll get into that in a second. And then the third step is that we're going to do a coordinated email and then blast all channels simultaneously. That's the game plan. And, you know, it sounds easy enough, right? Ah, but there's actually quite a bit of nuance involved in it. And I think, you know, this playbook, as I'm going to outline it to you, has some incredibly tactical parts to it, more than we could potentially ever cover in more one podcast episode. But I want to, I want to really hammer, um, 
hammer the steps as best as I can to give you to, to, to give you the good initial like bite of the apple, so to speak. And so I stay throughout this thing on the soccer analogy. And I break this playbook down into stages of the game. I call stage number one preseason training slash offseason training. This is what you do before the holidays or even coming close. Number two, I talk about the warm-ups. So these are the warm-ups right before the game. So picture you're, you know, you, you've arrived at the field with your team, you're running around, you're stretching, you're doing all that. Number three stage is the offer. So this is the actual discount that we're going to send. I call that the game. Number four is resending your email to unopens. More on that in a second. That's halftime. And then step number five is the 24-hour warning, right? I call this the last minutes of the game. So let me go through what each one of these steps are and what they entail. First, a note on preseason training. Uh, you know, the line summer bodies are created in winter, right? So something that you should be doing regularly all throughout the year, we covered this a little bit, is emailing your list romance content, i.e. non-salesy stuff. You should be doing this well ahead of the holidays. You should be doing this all year long. So it, it, it bears mentioning. So let's focus it to today, right? Um, there's three levels here. So which one are you at? You, you're either someone that's been regularly emailing your list, romance type of content, non-salesy stuff throughout the year, let's say like at least once a month. You're either, you could be somebody that's, you send some emails, some romance content, but you've done so incredibly infrequently. Or you could be person number three, you've never emailed your list at all. This is gonna be the first time you do it. So I wanna kind of tell you what to do for each of them. What not to do, and this is critically important, is to have the first time you have ever emailed your list have it be a buy my art salesy type of email. Don't recommend that. That's usually not where you see the best results. So what we do recommend that you do ahead of sending any offers, discounts, or deals is send some romance content, you know, send, send some updates about you or some, some of your imagery and talk about a new series or talk about what you did in the studio, but do not say, and by the way, 30% off buy my art today, right? That's not going to work if you haven't warmed up your list. Now, a great way to do this um, one of the ways that we like to do this is tease the fact a sale is coming, right? So this is this is this is this is before the sale is even going to happen. You would send an email. I'm giving you an example of the email that has non-salesy language in it that says "Cheers," and I'm just going to say "Me, Patrick." Hey, cheers! It's me, Patrick. Patrick'sPhotography.com. P.S. The holidays are coming. I don't discount often, but when I do, it's around the holidays. Stay tuned for future emails, right? So let's just say. It's the month before we're going to have our particular discount. Let's say it's Black Friday. The month before, I would send four emails that would just have images of my photography. And all of them, all four, I would put a PS in there that says the holidays are coming. I don't discount often, but when I do, it's around the, ho around the holidays. Stay tuned for the future emails. Discounts are coming. They're not far off now. The big sale is, is coming soon, right? Some sort of a way to tease it. A great way to do that is the PS. So if you're ahead of the sale enough, this is something that you can do. Um, and for the purposes of the video that I mentioned earlier, I actually invented uh, my own fictional photography business called Patrick's Glamis Photos. Glamis is like this place in the bottom right-hand corner of California. It's got sand dunes. It's where that Star Wars with Jabba the Hutt was filmed. And I like riding motorcycles out there, so I have, I have photos of it. So for the, the visual portion of this, I actually go through this entire process and actually author the emails with the subject lines, with the photo, with everything else. So I'm just gonna keep rolling from the audio standpoint. Um, but you know, for instance, in 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 this this email that I did with like the actual glamorous thing, subject line is motorcycles, dogs, and sunsets. Dear Steve, the only thing better than a wheelie and glamorous, motorcycles, wheelies, is nothing. Patrick. So I sent a cool image, non-salesy language in the PS. I have I don't have sales often, but when I do, the discounts are steep like the glamorous stand dunes. Stay tuned. And as always, ride safe, right? So if you see the visual example of this email, and again, you can see this thing in the show notes. You can even download the images in the show notes if you like. Um, you're sending content ahead of the sale, important stuff of the playbook. You're sending content ahead of the sale, but you're teasing it with the PS. In the PS, you're just letting people know a sale is coming. There's no percentage discount off. There's no 20, 50%. There's no buy my art now. The psychology here is important. You're just kind of priming the pump, so to speak, making people aware that a sale is on the horizon. So I think, you know, regardless of where you are, whether you have three emails on your list or 30,000, this is a great technique to do ahead of a sale. And so few people do it. Don't just have the sale, have the discount, warm them up. Even if you just do it in one email, it's effective. But ideally, you know, you're sending often enough that you can do it a couple of times. So that's 
stage one, preseason training, right? That's what we believe that you should be doing. Let's talk about stage two. This is warmups, right? This is where you email your list and you let them know the deal is coming and you give them more details about it. So before it was just a real light teaser, right? Like, hey, this thing's out there, it's coming. Now it starts to get serious. So in number, in, in stage number two, and again, I'm at my visual example here as we podcast, I've got, I'm done with wheelies for at least the next 48 hours. Why? I need to get the store resi for the craziest, steepest, nutsest sale I have all, I didn't say nutsest. I said for the, ready for the steepest, craziest sale I have all year. Some store favorites are available, like wheelie time here. And in the email, I have a couple of my best sellers, right? Speak soon. So in that email, I'm letting people know the sale is coming really, really quickly, right? Like it's going to happen in the next week and I'm teasing it. And so the important thing is that you have some personality in there. You let them know that it's coming. So that's the warm up. That's stage number two. So now we've got, you know, anywhere from five to 10 to two, but at the very minimum two emails, just letting people know that the sale is about to happen. All right. Now we're at stage number three. This is the offer. And, you know, a quick pro tip here, it doesn't matter what your offer is. That's not the subject of this podcast. Maybe you're a free shipping person. Maybe you don't like discounting your originals. Maybe you have sculptures and you would never discount. Whatever you do, whatever you end up doing, 20% off, 30% off, you get your discount available. Boom. You let them know the sale is on. You can save 20% off store. This is what I used in my example. And again, my visual example is start your engines. The sale is on. Hey, Steve, it's Monday from now till Friday. We've gone full tilt, take 20% off store wide, use the coupon code wheelie time, right? Again, here, the key is, is that you have a deal. It lasts a finite amount of time. It's going to expire and there's a nice discount, right? So that's the offer. The next step, the all important step, the step so few people take, which is so important is the resend your email to unopens. Most email service providers make this really easy to do. You set them to say, send this email in 24 hours and only send it to the people that did not open the first email, hence the resend to unopens. And this works so fantastically well. People are busy. They're not going to open your first email. Most people didn't even see it. They saw the subject line. They blew it off. They were at a holiday party. They had too much eggnog the night before. So you resend again, and oftentimes that'll be the one that they open, right? So you, you, you do this step. You send the email to the unopens, right? Step number five is the 24-hour warning what I call the last minutes of the game. This is the, this is the email that you send that says the deal is about to expire, right? It's the last email in this sequence that you send. And you say, you know, Hey Steve, I can't I don't even know what I have in my example here. Let me see. 24 hours left till the sale leaves the desert. Wanted to send a final reminder that the sale is about to ride off. You've got 24 hours left to lock in your biggest discount of the year. And that is a absolutely critical step as well to let them know it's about to expire because you'll find what I always find is you, you get the most amount of people to react. We're human beings. We're procrastinators by nature that you, they always, they always end up reacting at that last 24 hour email. So if you don't remind them that it's about to expire in 24, 48 hours, whatever it is, you're, you're, you're not going to get there. So let's, let's sum all of that up. You've got five to seven emails, all hyping up and promoting a single offer, right? And, and I would say that that alone, that step alone is more than what 98% of artists out there are going to do. I've subscribed to hundreds of your, your email lists. I see what you do for your marketing. So if you do this part of the playbook, if you do it and only it, just that, you're going to win. Everything that we went over is free. It's pretty easy to do. Um, but it's also, it's the collegiate level. It's not even the collegiate level. It's the high school level. So let's talk about going pro, right? And why? Why do you need to go pro? And this is so important. This is also part of our thesis. And, and, and in my presentation, I have the cover uh, of a Stephen Pressfield book that I think I've mentioned on this podcast before. I don't know if I have it or not. But the title of uh, said opus is Nobody Wants to Read Your SH Asterisk T. I think you can figure out what that means. Nobody wants to read your yes. And, and, and this is just the truth. Nobody is going to read your email. Nobody's going to click your links. And nobody's going to buy your art. They're too damn busy. There's too much noise. The holidays are too crazy. Uh, if you want to have them read your email, to come to your website, to buy your art, you need to be remarkable. You need to make them read your emails. You need to make them read your emails. And to do that, you need to be remarkable and you need to understand uh, the power of coordination. So how do you do that? You coordinate all of the players on your team, back to our soccer analogy, to all be broadcasting the same message at the same time. So all of those stages of the game that I just went over all of them are going to have the same language, same place, same time. And 
You get them all working together like that. If you consider them and you think about them all as players, all on the same team, all moving in formation, you do this and you're going to win. You are literally at war this holiday season. I am at war. We are all at war as marketers and it's a war of attention. So marshal your forces, get them ready to go and line up to attack. I mean, you're literally Braveheart and that line of barbarians. That's, that's how you're going to attack to get the attention because it's that hard to do. Um, so again, what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about the stages of the game again, except now we're going to level up. And, and one of the things that I, that, I, that I thought about doing this that I presented when I originally did it is for each of the stages of the game, there is a beginner, there is an intermediate, and there is advanced. This is just kind of how I've broken them up. So I, I, the idea in all of this is that like, no matter where you're at, no matter what stage of the game, no matter your marketing acumen, you can run a part of this playbook. And if you just start doing the stuff that you can do, the next time you're going to take on another task, you're going to take on another task. And then the next thing you know, you're going to be at the advanced level rather than the beginner. So warm-ups. And we're jumping all the way ahead to stage two of the game because, you know, the holidays are right around the corner. Your preseason training's over. You've missed it. You know, if, 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 depending on when you're listening to this, you know, you can get back to it in, in Q1, get back to the preseason training. But now we're going to talk, we're going to start with stage two of the games, which again, remember is warm ups. This is right before the game starts. So what does the beginner do? You're going to email your list. You're going to do an organic Facebook post and you're going to do an organic Instagram post all coordinated with the same message. When I say organic Facebook post and organic Instagram post, just a regular post, which is free, right? So you've got the email. In, and this is another one of these areas where like you really need to have the, the visual aid. So you guys need to check out the show notes to get this. But you send an email with a certain subject line, a certain language, a certain image. You also author an organic Facebook post. Similar subject line, similar language, similar image, right? You do the exact same thing for Instagram. If you do just that, all of which is free, all of which pretty much anybody can do, you're, you're well on your way. What would the intermediate step be, right? So let's say we just talked about the Pee Wee soccer team. Now we're going up to the high school level. What you're going to do is all of those same things, except you're also going to add in an Instagram story, right? The Instagram stories are so powerful. So, you know, I've got these, these Instagram story in front of me again, visually. It says, for the next 48 hours, uh, I'm going to be in my trailer, because when you go to Glamis, you stay in the trailer, cooking up my biggest sale of the year. Get ready. Keep an eye on your email. So now you've got an email in their inbox. And you've got an organic Facebook post if you catch them on Facebook. And you've got an organic Instagram post if you catch them on Instagram. And you've got an Instagram story all talking about this one sale that's about to happen. So that's a heck of a way to warm up your list and a heck of a way to get their attention, right? If you're at the pro level, if you're Chelsea, if you're Manchester United, or if you're Barcelona, you know, one of the best football teams in the world, soccer teams in the world, what are you going to do? You're going to do all of the above. You're going to have your email you're going to do your organic and organic uh, Facebook post, Instagram post. You're going to do an Instagram story, but you're also going to run Insta Facebook ads and Instagram ads, right? Again, whatever you have in your arsenal, you're actually going to run here if you're, if you're a pro. You're going to do snail mail, YouTube, Pinterest, uh, uh, Snapchat, phone calls, whatever you have that's specific to you and how you've marketed and built your audience. You're going to hammer all of them, right? So you're going to have all of those platforms firing all at the same time, all with the same message, all with the same imagery. Except you're also going to have ad dollars, which means people are actually going to see your posts because, you know, you get throttled otherwise. <laughs> and in my presentation, I go, why? Why would you do this? And I've got a picture of Fire Marshal Bill. I used to love Fire Marshal Bill. I don't know, the in living color old thing. And he goes, let me show you something. And, and what I utilize at this point is there's this, there's this viral video on the interwebs of four guys in a circle, all with, all with like giant ball peen hammers, like the biggest hammer you can imagine. And they're pounding in this spike for a tent and they've got it perfectly timed where they're all going boom 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 and it's like it, it's, it's it's a miraculous thing it's one of these things that you need to see it but the point is is that by coordinating all this stuff and hammering and all of these various different venues all at the same time is how you actually get attention it is the only way that you can get attention it's too gone it's too doggone hard otherwise right so that's the magic of the playbook and understanding this technique and putting it together. So let's talk about uh, stages number three and four. We just covered stage number two, which is the warm up. And number three and number four, you've got the author and then you've got the resend to unopens, right? I, I combine those into one stage. And, and, and again, the beginner, the intermediate, and the pro is pretty much all the same steps, a little bit more, right? At the very least, as a beginner, you're going to email your list. You're going to resend to unopens. You're going to have an organic Facebook post. You're going to have an organic Instagram post. All coordinated. Again, same images, uh, uh, same message. Again, show notes, 
images of all of this. And, and, and as I'm like presenting this podcast, I'm actually looking at the work that we did on this. And it's like, you've got the actual email with the subject line and the imagery, and then you have the exact Facebook ad, the exact Instagram ad or organic post, which eventually become ads. So you're going to do all of that. And you're also going to, you know, if you're intermediate, you're going to do the story. If you're pro, you're going to have the ads running again at the same time, right? So all of those things, all firing in conjunction, working together. Last stage, right? The fifth stage, the 24 hour warning. Again, beginner, intermediate, advanced. The one nuance, which I would say is relatively new and yet is so incredibly powerful for this one is the Instagram story portion. And you can do this for free or, or you can do this as an ad, um, but you should do some combination thereof. And when your deal is about to expire, let's just say you're doing Black Friday and your deal expires Cyber Monday, right? The 24 hours or 48 hours, if you want, before the deal expires, you're going to start dropping tiles in Instagram. It says the deal expires in 24 hours, 23 hours, 22 hours, 21, 20, and so forth, and so on and so forth. And you can author these tiles or create these tiles. Photoshop, if you've got the, the chops. If not, you can use one of the, the online editors, which also works really well. But this is such an incredible opportunity to create scarcity and show the countdown. Look, if you don't want to do the 24 hours, you could do it every, you know, in, in, in 20 hours, in 10 hours, in five hours, in one hour. But you get the time about how much is left in the sale. You use some of your art and you kind of count down however you can. Now, if you're really aggressive, Instagram will actually let you do one of these things an hour um, and you can just have it go that, 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 but it just ends up, you know, it's such a powerful usage of Instagram stories is kind of like a countdown clock, a countdown timer. And I saw it being used the last holidays by the people that were really good at it. And man, it just, it, it plays on your soul. And especially, you know, if you don't want to do the hour countdown, with the Instagram stories, you could also do, like let's say you know you did a limited edition run of 10 prints, just as a for instance, you could say 10 are left, and then pick another moment in time, and seven are left, pick another moment in time, three are left, two are left, one are left, and every time you're continuing to highlight the art, like it's magic, it's magic. So Instagram stories is an incredible one. So I hope that translated and I hope that came through. I do encourage everybody that listens to this to check out the video because you're, because you're going to get all the visual aspects of it and you'll really start to see it. But this playbook is fundamental to everything that we teach at Art Storefronts and it is insanely effective. This thing works 100% of the time that it's tried and it all ties back to the big overarching concept of attention. And it is so difficult to get attention, especially now. The distractions are insane. And so back in the day, and when I say back in the day, I mean, you could even go back like two or three years ago, like you could get away with sending an email or two and maybe make some sales and do well. But now because the landscape that we live in, because attention is, is such a commodity, you have to be hammering in every venue possible that you can and all at once with a coordinated message. So if you understand that concept and you take you know, not just your, your one email or two emails that you would have sent three or four years ago, but move it up to like 10, 15, 20 different content touches. When you think about all of those various different content touches in all of the various different venues and quick aside, yes, we're hammering Facebook and Instagram. Most artists out there, that's what they have. That's what they're good at. But by all means, if you're kicking butt on Snapchat or Pinterest or YouTube or anywhere else where there is attention, hammer the message in there too. Absolutely do it. And, 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 and that's the playbook. And, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll say two things. One, you know, I do some consulting on the side and I ran this exact playbook for a, a huge sale that they had a couple of weeks ago and used it to a T. They're an e-commerce merchant, but a completely different type of business. And it worked crazy well. I think we more than doubled what they did last year. And that's all based on just how much attention we're able to get. So it just works no matter what you're doing. And, and, and also to sum up, like the holidays are going to come. There's always another holiday coming. You do what parts of this playbook you can do. You're not ready to start advertising. That's okay. Don't start advertising. Just get all the organic stuff in. Even if you just get to see how all the pieces work, even if you've got two people on your email list, whatever the case may be, this is the new way to market, the new way to capture attention. And the holidays are coming. I know when you're listening to this, it is a fantastic opportunity to get it going and give it a shot. 
So I think that'll probably be the longest episode. I hope that all worked. I hope that all clicked. If you're enjoying it, uh, I love, love, love if you would leave a rating on iTunes. Um, I think we're up to even like 32, 33, so we're really rolling, really, really proud of those. Um, the holidays are coming. Use the playbook, run it, hammer it. Good luck. <laughs>